Suppose when you left home today, you left the television set on while you were away, and right now in your living room, all kinds of programs are coming through one after another. <coughs> Nobody there to change it, turn it off. Then whatever would be coming through that set, the set is powerless to change. It will always come through as long as that set is on. It cannot decide for itself what program it should have. Whatever is broadcast will be coming through the set. It would be very difficult to convince the world that this is what's happening to every individual. I hope you are convinced that you are that set and that you are letting that which comes through you have its way just as if you were a TV set sitting in the middle of a room. You are a TV set sitting in the middle of the universe called a human being and through you is coming program after program after program and none of it is your choice. And by the mere fact of doing nothing, you are permitting it to happen unmolested and continuously. And this is what you have done for 10, 20, 30,000 years. And only when you become conscious of it and consciously do something, do you begin to take mastery over self instead of becoming or remaining an unself unsalted, unchristed creature. Now, a further thing about this hyp hypnosis is something again that you've never heard. And it's ticklish. But it is important for you to see that when you're looking out the reason you are not aware of the changing illusory pictures as a cosmic lie is that you have thought of yourself as looking out of here, the eyes, and you're not. That in you which is seeing this changing illusion of the universe is not your eyes. Now this is the tricky part. That which is seeing is something inside of you. And between that which is seeing inside of you and this external form, there is something else in you between the external of you and the internal of you. And the something inside deep in is looking out through that. And that's what it's seeing. It's seeing nothing outside. Nothing. It's all an inner vision. The inside of you is looking through something which is just inside the outside of you. And what it sees, it sees outside of itself. But all of this that it sees outside of itself is within your physical structure. So that to you it seems that it's outside of your physical structure. The deep within is looking at something outside of itself which is still within you. And that's where the illusion is created. And then multiply that by the atoms of your body and you have a universe. And that universe is the universe you think you're walking in. We are in a state of uncovering within ourselves the tremendous illusion or the cosmic lie about God. Within ourself, this illusion takes place. And because of the infinite number of atoms of your physical form, that illusion is multiplied sufficiently to create the illusion of a world. That is why we have not been able to catch the illusion in the act. By the time we see it out here, every cell of our body, every atom of our false self 
is vibrating with the lie and we have nothing left but those vibrating atoms all of which become individual picture tubes and now you've got 50 trillion 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 of them all telling one lie and there's nothing of you left to say it's a lie and so each of us has built a false universe within which we see as a as a true universe without not knowing what has happened there's only one protection Isaiah gave it to us. Jesus gave it to us. Paul gave it to us. All scripture has given it and it is that God is one and there is none else. And you are called upon to face the illusion of a universe with evil in it and say God is one and there is none else and in spite of the universal illusion I am that one. And there's nothing else in this universe that's going to get you free of the illusion but the acceptance that God is one. The minute you have a life apart from God, you're sucked into the quicksand. So your consciousness of God as one brings you then to the realization that God being the only one there can be no other one and therefore the evil that appears which cannot be God must be an illusion the atomic brain isn't going to figure out this illusion it's part of the illusion it has to come from a different source called consciousness And then when it comes from consciousness and you find that I have meat, I can never leave you or forsake you, I am with thee always, you begin to see why these words are there in the Bible. They are the only thing that can take you out of the illusion, which is so momentous that nothing else can take you out. In spite of the appearances, I and the Father are the one life. In spite of everything that the books say that I'll die when I'm 70.2 or that I must have so many child diseases before I get to be 12 years old or that I must have my share of the good and the bad like everyone else or that I can be a statistic among the accidents if I try hard enough in spite of all this I must stand on God is one and there is no other and so the statistician is wrong the mortician is wrong the government files are wrong everything in the world is wrong because it is the lie about God being one without division without separation God isn't an atom over here and another one over here and another one over there there is no division in God there is no atom that can divide itself and split up into another atom God is one there is no human life here and another human life there God is one there is no human here trying to help another one there God is one there is no human life here that is separated from God because God is one. And again and again, 50 trillion million times, you must come to God is one because there are that many lies coming at you inside your own physical being every moment. Without ceasing isn't sufficient. There must be a constant, undivided effort to consciously know I and the Father are one. And that one is not changing. That one is the one I was yesterday, the one I am today, and the same one that I will be tomorrow. 
through all my yesterdays, todays, and tomorrows, I am always the only one that I ever will be. I am this instant, all that I will be for five million years. I am the one that God is. For God is one and there is no other. And this must be the touchstone, the foundation, the fountainhead, the constant song you sing within yourself. There is no other. And this phantom problem, this phantom disease, this phantom death, this phantom anything is a denial of the one. I cannot even pray to God because that denies that I am the one or that God is the one and there is no other. How can there be an I separate and apart from God that has to pray to God if God is one? Do you see the futility of human prayer? How it is based upon the principle of Tunis? And all of scripture is saying there is no other, God is one. Whom shall you pray to? If you're praying to God, who are you? Another one? But God is one. When you pray to God, you are saying that you and the Father are two. And the teaching is that I and the Father are one. Do you see how every prayer offered by every clergyman is a denial of the teaching of the Christ? I and the Father are one. How can I pray? There's no personal self to pray, and if there is a personal self to pray, I'm denying God's allness. So all of the prayers in all of the religions and in those who have no religion have been the denial of the one thing that Scripture is trying to teach us because it's the only thing to get us out of a radioactive false universe. One. One that stands in the face of many and knows that only one is there. The instant you try to, in some way, change that outer, you have lost the meaning of identity. We learn in the infinite way never to try to find harmony in the outer world. It's the very opposite of every teaching that exists. We learn not to try to find harmony in the outer world, not to find healing in the outer world, not to find safety, security, or comfort in the outer world. The outer world is the world of changing atoms, of changing moving pictures. What can be safe out there? You're going to get an illusion of safety and you're going to find out it wasn't safe at all. What can be safe out there? Nothing. There is no out there. All that is out there is the infinite Father. That is all that is out there. And I am one with that which is out there. It is I. In the acceptance that I am out there, as I am here, I am accepting the one. And in that oneness accepted, I have stepped out of the illusions of the world in which security and safety and comfort have to be sought. And that is my meat. For I have, I am security. I am safety, I am comfort, I am peace. You step out of the three-dimensional lie into the four-dimensional reality because you are accepting one, one living infinite spiritual substance which the world calls God and which you know to be the substance of your being. Nothing else will take us out of the illusion. And so you see the beautiful plan which at first seemed to be a cosmic evil turns out to be a cosmic blessing. 
because your only way out of the illusion is to accept Christ as your being. The lie of the universe force, forces you to accept Christ as the truth of your being. And if you don't, you continue in the lie. That is why the Father's word will never return void. You will be Christed. You will return to that consciousness of the Christ called the second coming of the Christ. I showed this letter here to somebody the other day and he was so impressed by it I decided to bring it to the class today. I'm impressed by it too because an individual who is not one of our students at all has been able for a moment to catch a truth that we all must catch and we can all share her joy at having caught it. This is a woman who wrote three and a half weeks ago. Seems like about that. For some internal problem of a serious nature. And then this woman one day wrote me a letter telling me her progress. And after she had finished the letter but had not mailed it, one hour after... She wrote this and enclosed it with that letter. She said, in about an hour after writing this letter, I was stricken with very severe pains through the abdomen. It is still with me. Please do some immediate work for this. Well, when I received this in the mail the next morning, in the letter that she had enclosed it in, there was another envelope from her. And I opened that too, and here's what it said. Only last night I wrote you. I hadn't yet done a thing, incidentally. Nothing. I just opened the letters. Only last night I wrote you and asked for your help concerning severe abdominal pains which had very suddenly come on. And after I mailed the letter, I walked the floor of my room trying to realize that it was not real or true. You might say, why didn't she phone? And the reason is because she is deaf. She couldn't possibly know if I was listening or if she had contacted me by the phone or not. Finally, I took your last letter and I lied down on the chaise long in my room and I first tried to relax. I went over the truths that your letter contained concerning rejecting imperfection from our convictions and that we must overcome it, transcend it not out there, but in our consciousness by the realization that God knows what God is doing. I tried to grasp the meaning. Now this woman has never studied the infinite way. For three and a half weeks, at the rate of one letter a week, that's all she got. I've been telling her about the law of externalization. She said, I tried to grasp meaning in that of pure consciousness. And I reasoned silently that if God was pure consciousness, then pure consciousness was God. And if God was all, then in reality there was nothing but pure consciousness. And pure consciousness certainly could not create or cause anything imperfect, nor pain, as if so it had to be an illusory sense being held in my consciousness. And being false consciousness, it could not be real. This is pretty good so far for someone who's never studied this work. Then I realized that pure consciousness could not be the cause but of anything perfect and of good. And if it was not good, it was not of God, could not be true, could not be real, nor could it be reality. So far she's on beam. 
all in the quietness this is going through a mind because there's nobody to call. I realized there was neither you nor me, but only pure consciousness. God, my true God, self, and that the body was but a reflection of the presence, its idea of itself. And so how could anything opposite of itself be present? And then I found myself in that pure consciousness you write of, and suddenly I realized I was free. The pain was completely gone. Then she says, I don't know if I worked correctly, but I did get a realization of God, and that he was all the life there is, and therefore my life, and that life is perfect. And perhaps, too, my faith in your understanding, and having asked your help may have helped to relax my mind, but I only know that never before have I overcome anything so fast and in just 20 minutes time well we're always happy to say have, have somebody tell us thank you the work was successful but we have never had somebody tell us thank you I did it myself in 20 minutes who had never studied this work before and so when we look back at the disciples we realize that through those twelve Jesus was reaching the consciousness of mankind just as Joel later told us that don't think because I'm talking to you in front of me that you're the one I'm talking to I'm talking to the consciousness of you which is the consciousness of mankind and that consciousness isn't sitting in this room that consciousness is universal and this was his secret as to how, even though in relatively few numbers, he could reach the consciousness of the world. So it is that this woman obviously has picked up something, and it is proof that we here are more than just so many forms or so many individual consciousnesses. We are a transparency through which consciousness universal is receiving the enlightenment that pours through us there was no other way that this woman could learn so quickly except that she had been exposed somehow to this Christ consciousness which we are all expressing in various measures so this letter to me is very encouraging to know that it can be realized by someone not through 20 and 30 and 40 years of study but rather it is by a a certain kind of a willingness to accept the word acceptance seems to cover if a person can find it within themselves to accept that I have meat I really do have meat and therefore because I have meat I can sit here in the midst of the world of error and let the meat that I have reveal itself as peace harmony and security when you find that you can accept that the eye of your being has meat as she did without just those words then you begin to see that there's nothing that is ever going to be taught to you that is not already known and embodied in the eye of your being and so when you accept the eye of your being all of the scripture of the universe is already in that eye because I wrote it I spoke it through prophets and I know it and I am that living scripture in you you see the I of your being is God and I of your being has meat I of your being go before you always when you have the I of your being then the within controls the entire universe and the within of you becomes the without of you I go before you and I become the word made flesh 
All of this is independent of the errors, the ills, the grievances and distresses and disasters of the world. I, the meat of your own true selfhood, is independent of all of the karmic law of this universe. And therefore you're told, not by might, don't change that out there, don't try to do anything out there, your own will come to you, not by power, by I, by my spirit. Well, my spirit is all there is. My spirit is reality, and that out there that you wanted to change, that's the effect of a false cause. Do you want to change the effects of a false cause all your life and spend your life chasing that which isn't? But I, in the midst of thee, am greater. And if you have a concordance, take this tip. Go to your concordance and look up the word midst, M-I-D-S-T. And if it's a Gruden's, which is more complete than just the one at the back of a little Bible, you'll find that under the word midst, M-I-D-S-T, it will also say there is a special section in the midst. And so look that up. Right where it says midst, underneath there'll be a section called in the midst. You will be amazed at what has escaped the world of religion, science, engineering, arts, since the beginning of scripture in the midst will give you in about two columns the great and glorious story of the substance of your own being in the midst of this radioactive form which controls the entire universe of spirit in the midst you will be amazed and as you check those various passages or even just read them in the concordance, your eyes will begin popping. Could this have been here all these years and the world has walked by? I looked up a few and I saw so, some that I, I never knew existed. And then one after another after another. Why hasn't this been pointed out to us? because when in the midst was said in the Bible, nobody knew what anybody was talking about. Oh, yes, Joel knew. The enlightened ones knew. And they even put it in their books, just as it is in the Bible. But it remains veiled anyway. Because even when you put truth in front of the Pope, you're going to find unless the understanding is there, to know what Christ is, it won't matter. They'll still go out and pray for peace. When there can only be peace in your Father's kingdom, there cannot be war. There's war in a radioactive universe that has no reality. And what are you to do about it? Don't go out there and resist it. Don't go out there and change it. I, in the midst of thee, am greater. Don't pray to God for peace. That's separation. That's like holding up a great big flag and saying, I am separated from God, and now I'm going to pray to God and pray for peace. When that comes from high up, you see the problem that we face if we rely on man whose breath is in his nostrils. If we go to the creature instead of the creator, the creature is out there, the creator is within you. And we must go to the creator to honor the father supremely and not the creature, not the man of Adams. The man of Adams, no matter what he wears, whether it's the smock of science or the scarlet robe of religion or the black robe of the judiciary or any other kind of robe there is, is still the creature. He's the man of earth, the man of atoms, and he is part of the radioactive nothingness of the universe. As long as our faith is placed in him, we're placing faith in him who has not yet found the creator within. These are harsh words. And they're not given to the world at large. 
They're given only to the enlightened who know what to do with them, who will not go forth and say to our neighbor, don't you know this or that, but rather will go down to Egypt with these words and dwell on them in silence and secrecy. They are meant for your liberation. And only when you are liberated will you discover how foolish it was to try to enlighten those who have not sought your help. Nothing in this world will enlighten them. They are listening with a brain that cannot hear the word of God you speak. But when your light is shining, it will draw unto you your own. It will draw unto you those whom you are given by the Father to liberate. Then you can say, Father, all that thou hast given me, I have kept. But don't go out seeking. Don't go out sharing truth with a human brain. It has no need or desire for your truth. It wants more money in the bank and better health. It wants an extra year or two to live in the human mind and the human body. It wants a little peace and quiet and a retirement home to go to when it gets old. That's all it wants. It'll settle for that. We who are in this work will not settle for that. The eye of our being cries out for liberation from the false concepts with which we surround ourselves. Now let us take this cosmic lie and see it as the cosmic blessing it really is. Suppose you were making out a very complicated statistical report and at the beginning of the report you made a very, very important error but didn't discover that error. And now for days on end you continue making more of this report that is so vital but always this error is being repeated because you never discovered it. And now you're finished after three months of work with a great core of statisticians working with you and this error you made at the beginning has continued right on to the end and it's all done and 500 of you have put forth a work which now has to be done over. Suppose that error had to do with some engineering. In a missile that was going to release men to the moon and supposing by the time they got to the third rocket that was supposed to go off, your error came into place and that rocket wouldn't go. Do you see how one error multiplied a million times can lead to a major disaster? Now the blessing of this world is this. You can see your errors. They're right in front of your nose. If you made an error over here, invisible, and didn't see it, you'd keep making it. And now you're looking at your errors. That's what this world is. But you haven't known that, and so you kept making them. But when you know that this world represents your errors, you'll be looking at it for that purpose. And now your errors inside are visible to you. Oh, that's my error out there. I have to correct it inside. Do you see the cosmic blessing of this visible world? When you have no more errors, you're through with this world. You don't need it anymore. And until you learn that that's what this world is for, you'll keep looking at it and try to correct the errors out there. When the error out there is telling you the error is in you, get busy. That's what the world is for. It's your blackboard. It's your cosmic television screen. It's telling you what's happening in these five billion trillion atoms in your physical form. 
and what you have to overcome is these atoms inside not the pictures they project outside and so we have a great blessing just imagine if I had to find the errors inside me I wouldn't know I had them I'd go on committing suicide every day as we all do but here the error is brought forth and projected and magnified and there it is handed to me on a silver platter here's your error and all I got to do now is go into the silence within and quiet those little bouncing atoms do you see the blessing of this world look at your errors and realize they are not out there There are some vibrating atoms within you which are magnifying a minor little fault into a great production. And it has some fancy names in the chemical books, in the physical books, and in the medical books, but it isn't fancy at all. It's a simple little inner something that needs a little monkey wrench, that's all. And your monkey wrench is silence then that remnant in you that is still complaining and projecting itself into a violent disaster out here will be still the silence of I will show you that the control of this outer world is in I I am God not that outer world don't worry about it I am still God be still and know that I am God and now you're at the controls you're at the cause you're at the source when you're at the source you're in dominion you're independent of all of the world of pictures no matter what names they give it I know your needs it is my pleasure to give you the fullness of my being as your being and so I think we have some degree of clarification and so here we are now we come face to face with a disaster it's staring us in the face it's a great danger and our human instincts are to run to do something about it I have meat put up thy sword human self not by might not by power but by my spirit by I resist not this danger overcome not this danger I am omnipresent I am God there is no place where there is another than I I am the only presence where your radioactive brain is seeing danger I am the overwhelming illusion is the danger the reality is I the father ever present and as you practice within with I I will take you out of the overwhelming evidence of the senses into my kingdom right here where the danger appears there is none present but I there is none else get your monkey wrench get inside in silence and let that monkey wrench of silence tighten the screws so that every danger appearing in the world is met with the knowledge but only God exists God is the only one there is no other and you will know that every response to danger is your false vibrating non-real self that's how you have been brought into the counterfeit universe 
never could the counterfeit universe make an impression on yourself it makes its impression on your false sense of identity the two make you susceptible when you're the one you are the allness expressing itself Every danger out there is a reminder to you that you're not in a state of oneness. You're in a state of two-ness. So don't go out and argue out there. Talk to that second self that wants to exist. He's the problem. The danger is not out there. The danger is the second self that has no reality. Talk to it. Let the one speak to the second and assure it that I alone am self. And forget the dangers out there. Resist not the evil. Don't worry about a thing out in this world. Get rid of the false second self. He's the mirror in which all the dangers appear. When he's not there, you are in oneness and lo and behold, the kingdom of God on earth stands before you. Please don't take this as rhetoric or eloquence. This is the fact of the Christ as it has come through scripture. There is only one and you must know that you are that one. Then you overcome a radioactive universe and you can turn around and teach science and religion how you did it. Son, all that I have is thine. Son, thou art ever with me. The majestic power of these words alone in your consciousness is freedom. Son, I am with thee always. Rejoice that your name is writ in heaven. Know that we are one. One divine being. And the false human self splinters, scatters, disintegrates, and there stands I, the child of God. Not in vibration, not in radioactivity, but the spirit itself. Undifferentiated, undimensional, unconditioned, inseparable, indivisible from the infinite spirit that I am. This oasis of silence is the I. And from this, only from this, does my grace become thy sufficiency. The grace through silence is your sufficiency for it disintegrates the illusions of the world around you. I reveal myself as the word made flesh. I reveal myself as the ever-present harmony where the eye had seen danger. I reveal myself as the eternal life where the eye had seen. Parentheses. I. A marriage right now between science and religion would be the blind leading the blind. But the eyes of the Father are in you. And your vision, as you rest in the word of God present as the self of your being, your vision will be liberation for this world.
And so you must be a shining example of that liberation. It makes no difference what the depth of the problem is. If all the world thinks it's impossible, makes no difference because the problem is only part of the false world. There are no problems in reality. There are no problems in the Spirit of God. And once your consciousness knows that, you will look out and say, nothing is impossible. Where do we begin? Nothing is impossible to the Spirit of God because it is the perfection of God. And nothing can stop it from being perfection. It is the only power in the universe. It is the power of your true self. It is the vision, the hearing, the sight, the power, the presence, the energy, the activity, the harmony, the truth, the love, the fullness. And nothing can stop it. If the males don't work on Sunday, a cablegram will come. If the telephone is out of order, someone will knock on the door. It makes no difference when or where or how. I am the only power and I am self-fulfilling in eternal perfection. This is the law and nothing can stop it, ever. And if this is your conviction within, you will relax in the non-power. I need no power for all the power there is is God which is the substance of my being. Oh, to find that peace where you can do that and just say there is no power needed. God is present. God knows. And you can do it if you work at it. God knows. And if that God who knows is not separate and apart from your being, then that knowing will show forth in you. There is no being apart from God on the face of the earth, although all of the visible evidence says so. Have a little faith in yourself. And watch that little mustard seed grow. Have faith in yourself. For that is God. Now we have Father's Day coming up next week. And so I'm sure the Father will have a special message for us. I haven't the slightest notion what it might be. And I am quite certain that message is already finished and just ready to fall off the tree. Whether you're here or not, be sure to be with us by being with the Father. The Father within yourself. And we'll be with you the same way, all one in the Father. Now let's let this move through us into this world today so that we can feel that we are part of the one, doing the work of the one, living in the one, being the one. We're the waves, but we're the waves that make the ocean. And we're the ocean that makes the waves. All that is in the ocean is in the wave. All that is in the Father is in you. All that I have is thine. Accept. Never stop accepting and ye shall receive. Now that is the meaning of Christ consciousness 
the acceptance realized that I and the Father are one. And there is no other. Everywhere danger appears to be, the Father is, and I and the Father being one, I am there where the danger appears. I am everywhere. How can there be danger if I am there? Now you've got to work with it until it's yours and then without even trying you'll be giving it to the world. Let's hold our silence.